Good morning to you. I didn't really know whether to mention it, but I, I wanted to say thank you to those of you who said such such lovely things to me yesterday at our church meeting. I am so glad that these thoughts for the day are helping and supporting you in your walk with the Lord. And it's my privilege to share another thought with you today. Um, I am much to Pam's dislike, perhaps, <laughs> still continuing with Romans. Romans is such a rich book, isn't it? And this verse, uh, Romans 12, 1, about presenting ourselves as a living sacrifice is such a profound uh, such a profound verse um, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God which is your spiritual worship holy in the sense of set apart given to God that's what a sacrifice is it's something that has, is dedicated to God and given to him completely. In the old sense, of course, it, it was about uh, an animal that whose, whose life was given in worship to the God to which it was offered. Um, and holy in the sense of set apart. You know, when we become Christians, we, we are completely changed. We move from death to life. We move from dark to light. We become a new creation. The old goes away. Baptism is a symbol of that. The fact that we have died and gone under the water and risen to a new life, to a different way. We are set apart for God. And there are times when we, we forget that and we need constantly to be reminding. And that's why I think Every day it has to be a case of saying, not what I want, Lord, but what you want. Not what my culture wants, not what people expect of me. No, I must do what you ask me to do. Not even to do what your family think you should do, or your children or your parents think you should do. Uh, my parents didn't want me to follow Jesus, but I disobeyed them. I tried to honour them in every other way, but they didn't want me to dedicate my life to Jesus. But I couldn't do anything else once I realised that it was all or nothing. And it reminds me, that verse, of the words that Jesus spoke in Matthew sixteen twenty four. Jesus told his disciples, If any man would come after me, after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? And uh, in Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis writes these words, and uh, I think it would be nice to have the way he puts it into our thinking for today. It's in mere Christianity, and he says this, Give up yourself, and you will find your real self. Lose your life, and you will save it. Submit to death, death of your ambitions and favourite wishes, every day, and death of your whole body in the end. Submit with every fibre of your being, and you will find eternal life. Keep back nothing, Nothing that you have not given away will ever be really yours. Nothing in you that has not died will ever be raised from the dead. Look for yourself and you will find in the long run only hatred, loneliness, despair, rage, ruin and decay. But look for Christ and you will find him and with him everything else thrown in. And that's it really. A lot of the teaching of Jesus was about how seriously we should take our commitment to him. How seriously we should take it. Think of the rich young ruler who was asked to sell all that he had and give to the poor because his heart was in his riches and he needed to give them up in order 
to follow Jesus. You think of the stories Jesus told. What man, if he was going on, what king, if he was going to go to war, didn't first think about what the cost would be and how many how many people he could raise in an army and how how well he could do before he sets out. <clears throat> so one, and and the, and the other th the other example was the the man building a tower. Is he not going to think beforehand? We quite often, <coughs> we quite often, Terry likes watching them. We watch programs about people who build their own homes. Um, and uh, almost every single time when they start the program and they start the building, they say, he's, he will say, the guy who does it uh, will say, um, so how much, is it, how much money have you committed to this? How long do you think it will take? And they'll say something like, oh, oh it'll take a year, and it, it, so much, so many thousand pounds. And I don't think we have ever watched a programme where it didn't take longer and it didn't cost more. And it nearly broke them. Um, and they were absolutely scrabbling about for extra money to do it. Because, and, and I often look at it and say to Terry, don't they watch these programmes, these people who build these houses? Don't they realise it always costs more and it always takes longer because either there are problems, delivery problems, something breaks and has to be replaced or the weather gets in the way. It always takes longer, you know. And this is one of the reasons why I think it's very, it's very difficult to do on the street evangelism because how can somebody seriously count the cost of lifelong discipleship of Jesus? in a momentary decision, on the spur of the moment. We need to know that it's going to cost us everything. It's not cheap, it's going to cost us everything. But when we give it all up, when we put everything we have on the altar, God pours in everything back to us. As we learn to live the way he shows us to live, with his principles and his ways, we find that everything is added unto us. When we stop worrying and fretting, when we, when we give away all that we have, when, we, when we're generous with our income and our wealth, and we give it to people and causes we never see or never meet, because God tells us to, we find we can't outgive God. Give and it'll be given to you. So what you sow is what you'll reap, but you have to sow it. You have to give it away. You have to throw it out there. You have to abandon what you want to do. You have to do it. I never expected to move down to, to Chard. Um, you know, my, my daughters are over in, in the east uh, part of England, in London and in Deal. And everyone I knew in the church I belonged to but I met Terry and the Lord told me to marry him and to move to Chard, which I'd never heard of. And everyone I knew said, why are you doing that? You don't know anybody there. I didn't except Terry and I hadn't known him for very long. <laughs> but I knew from the Lord that it was the thing to do. It wasn't what everyone I knew. I gave it all up, including a very, very high up prestigious uh, role in chaplaincy in South London. I gave it all up. Why? Because God told me to. No, we must not hold anything more precious than being a living sacrifice. Putting ourselves on the altar every day, putting our desires on the altar. As we make his desires our desires, they become really our desires. And all the fulfilment we could ever want and all the riches and all the blessings follow on when we have given up everything for him. We're his first and ours second. My time is up. I must leave you with these thoughts and see you again tomorrow. Have a read through chapter 12 if you get a chance today because we will be moving on from verse 1 um, tomorrow. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.